Okay, guys, um, welcome. Glad to have you all on board tonight. Um, I can see there's a couple of people that have joined already. Um, that's fantastic. I'm just doing a little bit of admin here before we start. Um, hopefully we're getting all the, um, the uh, comments up and the people are signing in. I'm just sharing it to a couple of the other pages. Um, hopefully through to Breed and to some of the other pages that I am um, part of. So, yeah, so if you guys can drop me a comment just to say hi, let's see who's, uh, who's visiting um, and let me know whether the sound um, is, is great um, or if I do have to do something for the sound. So who's ever out there, drop a comment. Um, and let's see if it's going to to come through. Um, okay, it's strange. I've just got Facebook user user. Hey, greetings from Munich. Awesome man. Um, nice to have you on board. Um, I'm sorry, I can't see your name because it's, it's, I don't know why it's coming up here as just Facebook user. So that's a bit of a, um, a little bit of a problem, but um, I will continually monitor the comments and ask the questions um, that may come up from tonight. So yeah, um, I hope all the people are safe around the world. Um, Hi, Kenlin, nice to see you. Um, yeah, I hope everybody's safe and uh, has, is having a really good start to the uh, 2022. Um, I know the last two years have been quite a quite a turmoil of the roller coaster riding for all businesses and none uh, unlike the uh, photography business. But anyway, be that as it may. Tom Ludwig, also man, nice to, to have you on board. Um, who is here? I can hear you loud and clear. McCavitt Motsepe. Okay, I hope I pronounced your name right. Um, that's great. So the sound is, is working. Um, just going to give about another couple of minutes um, for some of the other people to join. Um, obviously around South Africa and obviously um, also around the world. So it's going to be great. Hi, ah, Sharon. Hey, Peter. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm, I always look better on the bigger screen, so um, it's great. It's great. I'm going to take this banner off, um, just so that we can hide that. Um, Peter Peters, hi man, thanks, mate. I uh, look forward to having some of the questions come through. Um, hope it's going to be a little bit inspirational for you. Um, yeah, let's just uh, buy it some time. I'm just doing some uh, some sharing of posts. So if we can just. So Bella, awesome man, welcome from Durban. Awesome man, Jess. That's uh, I used to live in Durban many many years ago for about four years. Loved it there. I'm keen to come back. Um, one of our ambassadors, uh, Lauren, is is in Durban, and we've got this. Um, this challenge uh, the two of us are wanting to get involved in. So hopefully next time I'm in Durban, we can get that together. So yeah, looking forward to that. So welcome from Durban. Um, wow. Okay. Some of these guys, um, I'm sorry, I can't mention your name because it's coming up on the comments is just Facebook user. So apologies for that. Um, Clementine. Um, thank you, man. Hope it's going to be inspirational for you. Um, we've got a couple of people think so what I'm going to do is um, I'm just going to kick off um, and uh, just let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to be doing tonight so um, I'm going to be talking about light um, it's a very important uh, part of obviously of photography um, painting with light and understanding light and all those kind of things my background in photography um, it started out as, as a hobby back in 1977. And um, 
yeah, I've had uh, my journey has been long and and up and down, and it's uh, it started out as a hobby. I'm a street photographer, so I love um, walking in the streets and taking photos. Um, and then I was fortunate enough, like twelve years ago, to turn professional. Um, and yeah, so this is a little bit about um, what I've learned over the over the years. Um, of my photography and how important light has become um, in creating the uh, the scenes or the images or the moods that are that I want to create with my photography. Most of the stuff you're going to see tonight, are, well, basically all the stuff you're going to see tonight are um, stuff that I've shot in my studio. So it's a lot of model work and a lot of portfolio work stuff. Um, it's just it just shows off um, the lighting techniques are excuse me a whole lot better. Um, than trying to show you some other some other stuff. So um, hopefully that'll that'll show you exactly where we're going to go. I'm going to challenge you a little bit tonight. Hopefully, um, um, especially about light um, and 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 you as photographers and uh, you know what's kind of holding you back or what do you think is holding you back. I've done a number of talks and workshops around the country. Um, I'm always there. I'm asking. Um, the folks, you know, what is stopping them from moving forward. And I'm going to share some of those uh, those answers with you tonight. And hopefully they ring true with you. And hopefully by the end of this, uh, this talk, um, you'll start challenging yourself a little bit more. So let's try and get into this. I'm going to decide um, whether I'm going to have my talking head in the way so i'm going to think maybe maybe i'm not so i'm just going to give you the full screen um, i've got the option of me talking in the corner but um, it's let's let's not go there the talk is not about what you can see of me but um, hopefully some of the images that i'm going to show you so let's uh, let's look at my first slide which says change begins at the end of your comfort zone and um, that is a incredibly true statement um, if you are not pushing yourself um, every day as a photographer it doesn't matter whether you are a professional photographer and you're earning your living from it or you a hobbyist um, you should be pushing yourself to um, become a better photographer every day and um, that is uh, you know change in your in your work and and how you do your work is um, comes at the end of your comfort zone so if you're sitting back and you're just kind of content with where you are um that's always been warning signs for me um you know get out of your comfort zone bud and you know start learning something start getting a little bit cleverer and doing some other stuff so let's have a look so i've often asked people you know what stops a photographer becoming a great photographer um, and I always get a lot of answers from this and some of them are very interesting some of them are you know are, are, are true and uh, some of them some of them sound to me like excuses sometimes so um, I'm going to go through some of them with you and we can have a short chat about them so the first one is let's, why is this not working Okay, so what stops a photographer becoming a great photographer? And a lot of questions, or a lot of answers I get is my camera. You know, my camera is stopping me from being a, a, photographer, a good photographer. Um, I need to get the next, um, I need to move to another brand or I need to move up. Uh, uh, I'm only shooting with a certain make or model and I need to move up. And I think when I get to that place, my photography will improve. And so those are the answers that I get. We think we seem to want to, you know, we think that our gear is going to get us to where we're wanting to be. Um, and I, I don't really agree with that. Same with lenses, you know. Um, I'm saving up and I'm going to get myself a really good lens. And I think then, you know, my, my photography is going to prove immensely. So, um, yeah, that's, <laughs> that's also not the, the same thing. It's like, a, it's like, for me, it's always like a chef who is um, who's saying, look, I'm going to be a become a really good cook. Um, I've just got to get a couple of more better pans and saucepans and spoons and ladles. And then once I've got that, I'm really going to be good. So 
don't blame your tools for um, for where you are in your photography. The other one is uh, you know the exposure triangle or understanding your um, your camera and how it's taking the photographs, um, the shutter speed, the aperture, and you know the ISO and you know, I'm not, I don't quite understand that and really I'm stuck. So I'm shooting on some kind of manual format or sorry, man, not manual format. I'm shooting on a automatic format and I'm allowing the camera to do some of my, um, my adjustments or settings on my camera. I'm not saying that it's wrong for you to shoot like that. I'm saying that if you want control over your photographs and you want the photographs to look how you want, then you have to be telling the camera what it needs to be doing um, and making up your mind on how your, your image wants to look and, uh, and, and set that up in your camera and take the photo. So exposure triangle is one of those that people tell me it's holding them back. Um, composition. Um, yeah, it's, it's sometimes a problem. I think if we don't understand, uh, composition, you know, our photos, um, can come out a little bit poorly, but it, it is something that's, that's holding you back. I think you've got to understand the rules, um, or the guidelines more likely, um, before you start breaking the rules and start creating some really cool images. The other one is creativity. You know, I'm not, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm not creative enough, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there's a, a very well-known uh, photographer in South Africa called Brett Florence. Um, I've been to many of his talks over the years, a uh, very inspirational guy. Um, and he's, uh, he doesn't shy away from saying that, uh, I remember him saying to me, he doesn't, he doesn't have a creative bone in his body. Um, and all that he has done, all that he's done is he's learned what to do. So, some, some folk, it comes quite easily, um, and they have it, and they've got the eye, and some folk will learn it and become good at it. And, you know, Brett is a, is a testament to that, who, if he says he wasn't creative, he's flipping creative now. So there's, uh, you know, don't let creativity hold you back. You know, find out what your problems are and go and um, sort them out. Personality is one thing that also comes up. Um, you know, I'm shy. I don't like talking to the people. You know, I don't really know what to say. Um, you know, I don't know how to speak to my models. I don't know how to speak to my brides. I don't know how to speak to my um, my, my couple shoots or my engagement shoots, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, if you're shooting people, then personality is a is a major thing in your in your arsenal. Um, there's nothing worse than having. Uh, a photographer who's just absolutely silent and um, is, you know, is, is not talking back to you. Um, obviously, if you're doing stuff like um, landscape and food photography and things like that, or even um, infants, um, you know, maybe you don't have to have that outgoing personality, but it's, it's definitely something that, uh, that will stand you in good stead. Other people say to me, it's stopping them from being a good photographer is the editing. You know, some, there's a lot of people out there that don't like editing and that's great. You know, if you, it's, that's how you want to do your photographs. That's great. That's not a wrong, it's, it's, it's not wrong. Um, those that are wanting to do editing, they're feeling that it, that it's holding them back or stopping them from being great. Um, well, you know, you just got to actually get on, uh, get on top of it and, 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 and find out where you can learn and be a better and be better at, at, at your uh, at your craft. So if editing's part of your workflow, as it is mine, um, then you need to teach yourself or find a, find a way to get yourself um, uh, the knowledge to to do what you're wanting to do. So what is holding you back from becoming a great photographer? Um, well. A lot of them get, I get is, um, I'm a natural light photographer. Um, so, so for me is, yeah, so, so everybody I think is a, an, is a natural light photographer and I hope I'm not standing on anybody's toes, but I, this is just my, this is just my feeling and, and what I feel about it. You're a natural light photographer, you know, for me, sometimes it says, and it's not to everybody is that I'm a natural light photographer because I don't really understand how to work with, um, strobes or artificial light. So I'm, I'm a that photographer. So, um, 
if you want to become a great photographer or you want to better your work, you need to understand how light works and not only sunlight. You need to understand how your, your strobes work, how your flashes work, how artificial light works, LED light. You need to understand that. Um, I started out as a photographer. I never had any light. The only light that I had was sunlight. Um, and I used that and I learned how to, to work with sunlight, where it was, what time of day, if I could shoot at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, what all those things, where was light going to, 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 to tell my story. So my conversion when I moved into using strobes was quite easy because I just I knew whether I wanted the light. Um, and when you use natural light, you have to wait for that time, for that sun to be in that place for you to get that light. Whereas when you're using strobes or the, the weather conditions outside just don't allow you to, to do that, you need to bring in your own light. So um, I quickly learned that. And I think it's a, it's a massive um, feather in your cap. You know, if you, if you step out of your comfort zone and start learning how to use a simple flash in your, photo, in your photography, um, you'll see how uh, a long way it will go in, in getting you there. This is a great one. Um, that I always, I always hear. Um, I'm just waiting to save up for my, and then there's always something underneath there. So there's either a camera or a lens or a, whatever it might be. Um, you know, once I've got that, then I'm going to be a good photographer, or then I'm going to go to the next level. I'm saying, you know, there's a big, um, there's a big story out there um, where it says, you know, gear doesn't matter, and I want to say that. I agree with that, that gear doesn't matter because people often stop moving forward because of their gear. So they, they will make an excuse for not taking a photograph because they don't have that camera or they don't have that lens. And I think you need to, to, to not say that to yourself and actually go whatever camera that you have and whatever lens that you have or any gear that you have, or whatever light that you have, you need to go and learn how to use that. Because the day, when the day comes that you do purchase your new camera or your new lens or your new flash or your new strobe, um, you're not starting from scratch. So the adage is gear doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, gear matters. Okay. So, you know, if there's a certain look that you're trying to get out of a, um, a photograph or an image, you know, there's certain lenses that will never, ever get you that look. So if that's the look that you're going for, then you need to, to have to, to strive to get to that gear. So it's a double-edged sword. My, my, my scenario is use the gear that you have um, because when you start getting good, you start buying the gear that you need and uh, your, your photography just moves to the next level. This is a big one. Um, for me as, a, as an educator, um, it's it's something that I'm always uh, it bewilders me so much, you know. I've I've spent a fair amount of my uh, cash, you know, learning and paying people to teach me stuff um, because I think it's very important. But we're not prepared to invest in yourself. We quite quickly and happily go out to our camera shop or wherever we're going to go and we'll buy ourselves a 20,000 Rand lens or a 50,000 Rand camera. And um, it's nice because we can actually show somebody, you know, look what I bought for 25,000 Rand or look what I bought for 10,000 Rand or look at my new camera, I spent 45,000 Rand on it. And it's something that's tangible and you can look at it and you can see it in your bag and you get excited. And I understand that everybody loves new things. But it's very difficult for some of us to invest in ourselves. You know, it's, it's very hard to spend 10,000 Rand on making yourself a better photographer or 3,000 Rand or a couple of thousand dollars or a couple of hundred dollars to, to, to make yourself a better photographer, to understand the gear that you have um, and how you can actually get better with the stuff that you've already got in your bag. Um, so I think that's... Um, that's something that uh, I always struggle with. And I think if I can encourage you, you know, look, you know, don't only look at buying gear, look to start investing in yourself and, and, and making yourself a little bit cleverer. The other one is not understanding the limitations of your camera, your lenses and yourself. And what I mean by that is 
your camera has a limitation, your lenses have limitations, and you as a photographer have limitations. If you work within those limitations, you generally have really good photographs. If you start working outside any one of those three, your, your, your photography starts to take a dip. So you push your camera out of its limitation, your photography becomes bad or it gets, gets a bit dodgy. Your lenses, if you're pushing your lenses past their capability, you'll get bad photographs. If you've got a really good camera and really good lenses, but your knowledge is, is, is not there to, to drive those two forward, your, your photographs are going to be a little bit dodgy. So you need to understand what those limitations are. The other nice thing about understanding what those limitations are, when you find out what your limits are, you know where you need to go for your next camera, you know where to go to, to buy your next lens or what lens you need to go and, 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 and sort out. Um, and then you also need, you also understand um, where you are falling short from a knowledge base. So it's always nice to know that. Following the herd, okay, this is also one. Everybody wants to shoot the same thing. You know, we look on, uh, uh, on, on Instagram or Facebook or whatever, and we just follow, you know, how somebody else is shooting. And we don't really, um, we don't really shoot for ourselves. We don't really shoot what we like. Um, in fact, a lot of us shoot for likes. So we're shooting that other people will like our photo. Um, and the more people that like our photo, the better, the better we feel. Um, and it doesn't work like that. You know. It's, you know, people look at your work and they like your work and then they will come and, you know, they, they will employ you to come and do photos for them um, because of your unique style. So everybody's looking for a, a style that you have. So try not to follow the herd. Try and set a set yourself up and start shooting more for yourself and what you like and then you'll get followers and 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 clients that are going to want to have photographs like you you've done um lastly i think um is uh, passion you know for me passion has driven me to where i am today it's something i get up every day and you know i love what i do um i spend hours teaching myself stuff um, experimenting in my studio, experimenting on locations and trying to figure out how else I can use my lights or what else I can use the lenses for and can I shoot it like this and can I shoot it like that and that's been an ongoing thing. Um, it's, it, it's almost on a weekly basis that I'm doing something, either sitting in front of the computer, learning a new skill, learning a new editing skill, um, watching some of my some of my mentors or some people that I follow and looking at their work. And then the other time, the other days I'm sitting in the studio, actually doing some physical stuff, trying to put what's in my mind um, onto my camera. So I think that's, that's that. So I'm going to ask you something. So before and many, many, many years ago, somebody said to me, ask me a question, um, which was, I thought was a bit, a bit weird um, at the time, um, and I didn't really quite understand what he was saying. But um, it was only later on that uh, it became very evident to me, you know, how how radical this question was, and how important it was. And when I started out, it wasn't really something that I, you know, thought that was that important. But the question was, he said to me, can you see light? Okay. I thought, geez, okay, that's a bit, that's a bit weird. Um, you know, of course, everybody can see light. You know, I mean, that was a, it was a strange question for me. Um, I, wrote, I didn't quite understand what he meant. And anyway, we parted ways and, you know, I'd never saw him again. And much later on in my, in my, on my journey, I, I woke up one day and realized what it what it means to see light. Um, and now for me, it's almost second nature. I can walk into a place now and I know exactly where I'm going to shoot and what photographs I'm going to get in those specific places. Um, so my, my creativity brain is, is, is walking into a, an area that I've never been in before and I can scan that, that, that location and I know within five minutes where I'm going to shoot and where the light is going to be and what the quality of that light is going to be and what kind of photos I can get in those different locations 
or different places that I've that I've that I've found light. So this is what this talk is going to be about today: is can you see light? Um, and hopefully, some of the images that I'll show you um, are going to help you along the way, um, and you'll be able to see that how it, the many different ways that I that I use light or I see light and how then I create it in my image to to you know to to show you guys so um so let's get on with this man because it's going to drag on a bit I think maybe so I mean talking a lot of work so this is a <laughs> this is something I, I I get a lot you know I'm a Godox um ambassador so um I shoot with Godox lights um They've been great. Um, I started out many years ago shooting with them, and I've never looked back. So people always say, oh, you know, you shoot with light. So let me just get that out of the way. I shoot natural light. Okay. I love it. It's where I started. It's how I learned how to, to, to see light. It's where I learned about light. Um, it, where, it was where I learned about the quality of light um, and all that stuff. So I love shooting natural light. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the images that I've captured along the way. Um, if there are any questions, guys, please just pop them in here. I am following you. Like I said earlier, some of the guys' names are coming up. So I can I can call you by name, but unfortunately, I'm not sure why. Um, some of them are just saying Facebook user. So um, I will still put those questions up and, um, and, and answer them as we go along. So let's get stuck in. All right, so we're looking at some uh, some natural light. So here's two images. One is shot. The one on my left, on on the left, is shot in my studio. Um, I have a window um, that the light streams through. You can see um, the shadows that the, the window pane is forming, and the, the burglar bars on that window are forming onto on, onto a fencing. So I'm using that. It's quite hard light. You can see by the shadows. Um, that it's making a, a relatively hard line. Um, the window panes of the of the window are opaque, so it's not just clear window. So therefore, you'll see the lines are not absolutely sharp. So they've got a little bit of um, a, a blurriness to them. That's because of the opaque. But the one on the left is shot on the inside of my studio, and the one on the right is shot on the outside of the studio. Both natural light, and you can see how different the light is. Um, between the two of them and that's one just looking for one wanting to shoot outside and pulling the the model outside and getting the image that I want just by um, understanding where the light is looking um, if I can just say that if I'd shot a fence there with the light from the outside I would not have gotten the kind of image that I got from him because the hard light is creating all these these shadows and lights of, of his um, physique. So when you've got soft light, you're not getting that kind of image. Um, so you're looking for some relatively hard light to, to get an image like that. This was shot um, fairly recently in one of the warehouses here in, um, in Port Elizabeth. Um, I know some of the guys from P Photography Club um, went there. I think we shot, you guys were shooting the ballerinas there. I think um, I was there on the day. Um, I was invited by um, um, by the club to come and have a look and, and, and see and, and check it out. And when I walked in there, I saw, yeah, this is, this is a great place to shoot. So I quickly made a, a, a booking and, and, and went to go and shoot. So this is one of the photographs that I got. Um, and basically what I'm saying here is seeing the light and knowing how to use it. So that's, you know, I saw that light pattern on the wall and I thought, wow, that's going to make a really cool thing to shoot at. These, uh, this thing that, uh, Sune is sitting on was, was just kind of like, uh, somewhere else in the, uh, in the warehouse, which I just brought across and used. Um, and then that's, um, stuff that's lying on the floor was brought by one of the designers and I just kind of maybe used it and threw it on the floor and just added some some different kinds of texture but um yeah so that's knowing where you knowing how to see the light okay so this is inside my studio this is the same window okay 
it's just different days. So you can see the one on the left, it's beautiful and soft. Um, it's a pretty much like a little bit of an overcast day. Um, the light coming through the window is awesome. Um, you can see how beautiful the light is falling on, on Savannah's face. And then on the one on the right, you can see it's a little bit of a harder light. It's obviously not bright, bright light, but um, you can see uh, it's a completely different exposure. You can see how different I'm, I'm using the, when I use a different background or a different V flat. So this one's a white V flat, and the other one next door is on the left is a black V flat. So it does change it a little bit, but you can see the light on the face of the two girls. Um, they're completely different. And that's just showing you that I'm in the same location. Um, it's just different days, different weather conditions, different times of the day, and you will get different photographs. Uh, hey, Tyrone, how's it, mate? Nice for you to join, man. Um, Brunette Jacobs. Thanks, man. Thanks for joining in. Okay, so that's the same window. Okay, so this was also a shoot on it. So this is also natural light. So the one on the right is inside my studio and I'm using the light coming through the door of my studio to shoot that photograph. Um, and you can see how different uh, the light fall is on the two girls. Um, it's, it's beautiful light that's coming through there and there's, uh, there's just enough shadow and there's just enough um, angle on that light to give the, the definition and enough contrast. I took the same two girls and we went outside. Now we're shooting in um, just outside the studio and you can see the difference in the quality of the image. It's more grungy. The light is harder. You can see the, 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 the you can, well, I call them panda eyes, but you can see the dark, you know, of, of the eyes um, of, um, Emma on sitting on top, um, but it's a completely diff different vibe. They're both wearing exactly the same clothes, but you can see they got very different feels to the photo. Um, and that's just basically shooting inside and then taking 10 steps outside of my studio and shooting it outside. So always be aware that there's many kinds of images that you can get just by, um, you know, just looking for the kind of image that you're wanting to get and looking at the light and then deciding what you're going to get out of there. What What is the style of the image you're going to get out of there? Okay, I'm getting a lot of flippant questions here. So I hope I'm getting through to, <laughs> getting through to everybody. Um, okay, there's another inside-outside shot. So obviously, same girl. Um, one is outside of the building. Um, it was, you can see it's very, very hard light. Um, you can see by the shadows of her arms and uh, the, the shadow behind her. Um, it's very, very hard light. Um, so shot that thought it would be great. I love the, the contrast and the, um, the, the, the texture of the wall was great for me. So I had to go and shoot out there. It's, you can see it's a white dress on a bright day and yet we can get this kind of image. Um, if you just walked inside of the building, I found this little patch of light. Um, I wish I, I wish I had taken a, a, a pullback shot of this, and just to, to tell you how small this little um, this little corner was in this in this building. It's actually um, it's very very tight. But I saw the light there, and it was nice and soft. It was a lot softer than it, than it was outside. And we put her in there, and found the little patch of light that we could get. And uh, we shot that. So same day, same girl, same color, everything. Um, and we can get those kind of those kind of images. Challenge yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. This is the same. This is the same shoot I did. Um, you saw the image before. So yeah, I'm shooting with hard light, and 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 hard light. You can see by the shadows that are caused by the um, window panes. Um, the windows are extremely dirty, so they're not nice and clean window panes. So there is a little bit of diffusion coming through, but on the whole, it's hard light. You can see on the picture on the left, if you look next to her shoes and next to the wheel of that uh, that trolley that she's sitting on, you can see the light is hard. 
And as long as I'm positioning her the right way and using the light properly, I can get some really cool photos out of there. The same thing, this is in exactly the same place as the photograph of the on the right. She's just standing up and then she's in a different uh, uh, different wardrobe um, and using that light. Look at her shadow and see um, see how sharp that line is on 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 her shadow. Just to tell you that that's how that's how hard that light is. Um, so here's a question. That's cool. So Martin Ashworth, shooting natural light. How much do you shape the light, reflectors, etc.? Um, mate, I, I, not not a lot. Um, I would say, I can't say to you that I don't use reflectors because I do. Um, but on the whole, I would say maybe 80% or 85% of the time, I'm not um, using reflectors. Um, I will be, let's put it this way. So sometimes I'm using um reflect reflectors or reflections off um, the cement or I'm using reflected light off buildings or I'm using a reflected light sometimes off a car that's throwing light back. Um, so I'm always looking at places on where I can position and while the light is falling onto that car and it's giving a light back and I'll use that reflection of that light um, off, off that car. In my photograph, I'm, obviously the cars are going to be in the photograph, but the light coming off that car, even the the, the um, you get reflections off tar road, you get reflections off cement, you get reflections of a lot of things, and if you understand that how you're getting those reflections, you are going to be able to get some really cool photos. Even in this photo, these two photos that I'm showing you here, there's light that is being reflected off this wall and back onto. Um, Ariel, so use that. You need to, to understand um, the core, what's happening with light. It's not just coming in one way. It's reflecting off a lot of things. And um, yes, you know, I'm not going to say to you, don't use your, your reflector because a reflector is a, is a lifesaver when you need it. Um, but also, if you understand where the light's coming from, you are going to be able to use other things to reflect. Uh, listen, man, I've even used my white T-shirt to reflect light um, where I wanted to go. So, you know, do what you have to do and um, you, will, you will get to um, experiment. Um, so I've got uh, Tyronia. Hey, man, cool, bro. Nice to see you. Looking forward to seeing you in Joburg when I'm next up there. So what f-stop did you use on these images, Craig? Um, brother, I'm at around, I'm not a very technical photographer, so I'm at around like, uh, I'm assuming about five, six, or seven, one, somewhere around there. Um, I think the one on the left, I think is, uh, I think it might be even f8. It, it, it is quite a bright day, so um, I'm shooting at f8 there. So I like to have, um, you know, a lot of the, the detail i thought the detail in the wall was quite great it added to my photograph so it's not like i wanted to blur it out if i wanted to blur it out i would have shot it at a at a much wider aperture and maybe moved her away from the wall a little bit but you know the texture the patterns on the wall the colors on the wall i think added to my photos so i want that in so i will choose a an f-stop that is going to to give me what i'm what i'm wanting there i'm not that uh, that guy that sticks to um only 1.8 or only 1.4 or only 2.8 or anything i shoot whatever it doesn't matter to me it depends on what i'm wanting to get what i want out of the photograph what i want in the photograph what i'm trying to shoot and i will go right up to f13 sometimes if i'm shooting something and it's and i, and I need to be there um, so I'm not scared to to shoot at apertures. You know, um, I've got those low aperture lenses. I've got an 85 1.4. I've got 2.8 lenses. Um, I don't always shoot at 2.8. I'm shooting at 3.5. I shoot at f4 sometimes. I'm shooting at f8. Um, I'm not uh, I'm not stuck and uh, only shoot there. 
guys, I'm not saying that any, way, any other way to shoot is wrong. I know there's lots of guys that just like to shoot at 2.8 or 1.4, and, that, and that's great. I mean, they, they're getting the images that they want. I'm just talking to you about my own personal um, um, experiences here. You know, my way is not the only way. So, um, but thanks, Tyron. Yeah, I hope that answered your question. Let's have a look what else we got here. And okay. So, um, the one on the right is that same window of mine again. So, I'm using window light coming through there. You can see it's quite diffused off, off that, um, out of that window because it's opaque. And then the one on the left is door light. And door light for me is just magnificent, man. It's like it must be one of the best lights ever. So I use it a lot. I try and use it a lot. I'm always trying to find a door um, where I can put the model in and I can get light coming through. You can see light is not, the one on the left, the light is not directly shining in there. It's bouncing off something else outside that door. So I've got, so this wasn't shot at, uh, at my studio. It was shot at um, uh, Tiago's uh, uh, studio and his little office area. And um, there was a little bit of light that was reflecting in and I shot that there and I, I really loved it. So what I'm trying to say is you've got to be on the lookout for light sources and where you can put and where's the light bouncing and where's it coming in and where can you find soft light and all that kind of stuff. It's something that you've got to, you've got to learn and, um, and, and take advantage of. Okay, so this was, a, this was an impromptu little shoot. I was shooting Laurie yeah, and um, we, we were moving stuff around because we were getting ready to shoot the, the next a next set of photos and while i was moving around i saw this like light spill just smash onto the floor <laughs> okay that's an, here's a cool photo you know lie down over there let me take you a photo and we got maybe five or six really cool photos um in this in this section so always be on the lookout for stuff you know light is going to pop up all over the place you need to be aware of it and understand it and be able to make a photo of it and Put the person in the right place to get what you want <laughs> yeah so yeah i got it i said emma nice to see you man yeah those heels but i've got if you come to my st my studio i've got about i don't know about six pairs of these of these shoes that we use so yeah they 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 are quite hectic um let's moving let's move on um Uh, so here's another one. It's uh, sorry, I missed this tyrant. Um, yeah, I love the detail in the images, soft, but have a, so much texture. Yeah, so it's what I was wanting. You know, the texture on those walls, mate, were 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 what was dragging me there to to shoot there. So you got to figure out a way how you can add that texture into your photograph and have a good image of the of the model, um, and you can combine it. And if you understand what your camera can do, you can do the you can do the photo. Let's uh, move on here. What's next? Ah, okay. So this is in my studio as well. So this I shot from outside, um, shooting into the you know into the studio. So you can see those are the bars or the burglar bars, burglar bars on my studio. Shot through there. I thought it gave a really cool image. It told a really nice story. Um, I think the look that. Um, that Kirsten's got is is awesome, and you know, just it just set the scene, and we could quickly pull the photograph, up, um, the photograph, the telephone, and kind of made it into a nice photo shoot, a nice photo. But what I'm trying to say is, um, different day. Um, the sun is in a completely different place, so it's not streaming into the window. So I'm getting nice soft light coming through there, which is flipping great. So when I see it, I'm going to shoot it like that. And I get this beautiful, beautiful soft light which gives a nice moody, you know, a, a moody feel to the photo. Uh, let's have a look at what we've got here. Okay. So let's look at the one on the right. So that's from the window. So this is an early morning shoot. I've now opened the windows. So they're those, those pivot windows that you can get it, that you get at schools. So it's pivot windows. I've opened them. 
And you can see now that they make quite hard shadows um, on my V-flat at the back. Um, and then use that to create um, a, a different vibe. So you've got the shadows, you've got the patterns of the shadows behind, you've got the shadows going over her. And she's creating shadows with her arm. And, 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 and for me, if you know me, I'm... Um, um, I love my shadows, so I'm always um, I'm always looking to that, and I'm not scared of shadows. I'm not scared of shadows falling in front of or in front of the face or something like that. For me, it's what I shoot. It's how I see. It's it's something that I learned when I was in um, in the street. The one on the left is um, the 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 light coming through my door again. So the sun is streaming in through that door. Um, I've, as you can see, I've shut my uh, security gate, so you can see the patterns on the on the on the on the V flat. Um, and what's an amazing about this photo is that although the light is coming from behind her, the light that is reflecting off that V flat is lighting her face from the front. Okay, and I'm getting that awesome soft light from my V flat. Okay. So that's how I'm lighting that photo. I'm using, I'm using the, the, the source of the sun coming through the door that's hitting her on her back. And then I'm using the reflected sun of my V-flat to bounce back into her face. Um, he has a comment. Let's have a read of this. Vinesh, I see that your models do not really look straight into the camera during your poses to connect with the viewer. Is this the look you're after? Um, you know, sometimes they're not looking. Um, I mean, both of these that are up now are looking straight in there, at, straight at the camera. But, um, you yeah, I've, I've, they're not all. Uh, sometimes to, to not look at the camera is to convey a different mood that you're wanting to, con to, to, to use. So sometimes if a girl is looking down or looking away or looking out somewhere, it's it, it's conveying a different kind of story with that image. So there will be a mixture of of the images. So if you look at this photograph on the right, um, uh, with uh, oh, I forgot her name now. She's um, uh, anyway. You'll see that um, the rest, some of the rest of the images in the set, she's not always looking at the camera. So she's looking out the window, or she's looking to the side, or she's looking down onto the floor. She's just giving me a different vibe or a different feel, but I'm using that same light and she's creating a different mood by what she is doing um, with her eyes. But um, yeah, I love the, the eye contact. For me, eyes are always the, the things that are telling stories for me and are always the, the, you know, everything else for me is just prop. You know, anything below the eyes is, is, a, is a prop. Um, so even when the eyes are looking away, they're also telling a story. So I hope that answers, I hope that answers your question. Yeah, Tyron, it is. I, I love it. Eh? Yeah. Okay, so it's, yeah, we've got Emmy again. Mr. Hester works up on shooting harsh lights, my biggest struggle. Yeah, bro, listen, man, um, I love it. Eh? <laughs> so, um, I shot it, I was shooting today and I was shooting in hard light. Um, we started in the studio and I, I just can't stay away, so... I just get such radical photos when uh, when the light is is like it is. So yeah, I'm happy. I'd love to come up there and uh, but next time I come, we'll 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 set something up. Okay, let's um, let's see what else we got. Okay, so this is the same shoot. Um, yes, I'm gonna get killed if I can't, I can't remember this girl's name. Um, uh, so what I've done here. So this is window light. So it's the window in my studio. But what I've got on the window now is net curtains. So there's those fine net curtains. So I've now closed those net curtains. So it's given me an even softer um, diffusion, which is giving me this kind of image. Okay. So here again, um, Vinesh, um, she's not looking at me. Um, and she's not making eye contact with me. But the eyes being closed is telling a story again um, for what this photograph is. Okay, so you must remember I've got another maybe six or seven photographs that are in this set that she is looking at me. But this is just a, a, another way of, of conveying a, 
a, a, a story or a message or a mood or a feeling. So um, that's how I get to that. Um, let's have a look here. We've got another question. Uh, Dead Ferreira, hi there. Do you get it right in camera? Do you underexpose, harsh light, fix in post? Okay, good question. So, a long time ago, I realized that what my eye sees or what my eye is able to see and what my camera is able to see is, is, is very different. Okay. Um, my eyes are, and everybody's eyes are far superior to any, any um, sensor that you can find in your camera. If we just look at the kind of dynamic range that's available to our eyes and the kind of dynamic range that's available on our cameras, it's, it's massive. So we, we, I get it right in the camera because I'm, <laughs> let, me, let me explain it. I get it right in the camera for me because I know that if I, for example, let's have a look at this photo. If I'm going to get her face exposed correctly, to the way that I want it, then I'm going to expose for that. And what's going to happen is her black shirt is not going to be exposed properly because there's a difference in light reflection of those two things. So I will pick the face and I'll make sure that I get as close, as damn it, as I can get to what I want in the camera with her face. And I don't worry about the top. Because the top, if I need to figure out the top in post, I'm going to get the detail out in the, of the top, if that makes um, sense to you. So I'm always focusing on what the thing is the most important to me. And that is, that is what I expose correctly when I'm shooting, especially when you're shooting in, in, uh, in, in natural life like this. So the most important thing for me is to, is to expose the thing that I want. So for me, it will be your face. I'm, I'm looking for that exposure and anything else I'm going to fix um, and I'm going to bring out in post. But let me, let me add to that. You can't take a bad photograph and make it a great photograph in post. But you can make a great photograph, a brilliant photograph in post. So if that makes um, sense to you, um, I hope that does make sense. So... If it's not, ask the question again, and I'll and I will I will endeavour to answer it. Um, uh, here's a cool photo. Uh, sorry, cool question, Tyron. Um, you may ask. Focus in camera. Is it single uh, focus point? Yes, it's always single point. Um, I want to put that little square on the thing that I want in focus, so I will use that. I don't use that multi or the you know, we've got all those hundreds of little points that are flashing around. I use single point. Um, I, I use it because that's how I started to shoot. And, um, you know, that's it. When I started with um, analog photos or film cameras, they didn't have that. They just had a thing in the middle. And you had to focus on that in the middle. That's where your focus thing was. So that's what I do. Um, it's not wrong to use any other focus method if it works for you. Um... So, sorry, mate. I, I don't know. This is one of those Facebook users. So, I'm, I'm sorry it doesn't bring up your name. But your question is, please explain the V-flats, material use, dimensions. Okay. So, the V-flats you use in here, I've used in here. And I think you'll see them a little bit further on in my, in my talk. These are made from um, interior doors okay, that I bought at uh, Builder's Warehouse. Or, or if, if you're from outside of South Africa, some hardware store. I've put up the doors and I've put them together and they make a, they're not V flats. I call them V flats. They're like L, they're like L flats because they've got two long, two doors on the one side and one door on the other side to keep them up. But you'll see them, I think a little bit later um, when I show you some of my setups, you'll see them. And these doors are on, um, on wheels. So I can wheel them around in my studio. And then I also do have um, polystyrene boards um, that are joined together. Um, one side white, the other side black, and I use those as VFATs, and they're easy to carry around and move around and things like that. So, yeah, that's what I use in my studio. Uh, let's carry on here. We're still on 
on there. Okay, so I think we're getting to the end of natural light. So here's again door light. So this is inside my studio. Um, door light. Those are two different days. Okay. So you can see the completely different photograph that you're getting from the one day. And then the next day or two days later, you're getting the photograph on the right. So the one is quite hard, hardish light. And the other one is incredibly soft light. So same place, same studio, different day, different time, going to give you a different photo. Both of them work for me. They're both creating a mood and they're both telling a story. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> okay, Velda, I'm not quite sure why you become Facebook user on here, but cool, man. Yeah, when you're next in my studio, pop swing pass and I'll show you what, uh, what they made of and how I made them. Let's have a look and see where we're going from here. Okay, so this is now outside the studio. So the photograph on the right um, is on the beach. It's a beautiful, beautiful, sunny, harsh, sunny day. If you just look at the, the shadows cast by, um, by the arm on the, on, the, on the rocks, you can see how hard that shadow line is. Um, so it's bright, bright, bright. Um, you often get the girls' eyes watering because it's, because it's so bright. And then the one on the left is completely overcast. So you're com completely different. It's the same beach, guys. Okay, so these two are shot on different days. It's the same beach. And I'm getting different vibes and different moods and different stories and everything just, just because of the light. Okay, just because you can shoot different kinds of things in different kinds of light. Okay, so again, yeah, we're at the beach, same day, same day using the light or standing in a different place um, and positioning myself as the, as the photographer in different places to capture different things. So the one on the left, let's start there for, 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 <laughs> for now. So the one on the left, you can have a look and see um, the, the sun is directly behind me. So it's directly shining onto, um, onto the model. We've got sunglasses on because it's so flippin' bright and she couldn't keep her eyes open. You can see the lines on her, on her body and on her leg that are made by her jacket and her arm and how, how hectic those lines are. I'm getting that photo. It's not HSS. There's no lights being used here. The other one is the same day. I'm just positioned myself in a different place. So I've moved myself off to the left. The sun is still coming in from that one angle and I've placed it and I've now created more drama. I've created more shadows on her body. I've created more contrast on her body and I create that different story. Same day, same sun, same everything. Just being able to understand how the light is going to fall and how I'm going to, to capture that image um, on that day. Because you can't capture all the images in the same in the same place. It just doesn't it, it just doesn't work. Okay, again, outside. One on the left, overcast beach day. Okay, beautiful light, soft light. Everything is beautiful. Light is just falling and draping over over the model. So it's unbelievable the light. It's not the greatest day to shoot a beach shoot. I think there's a lot of people that have gone out there and said, okay, well, it's really too overcast to shoot this. Well, it's not really. You can really get some really cool photos. The one on the right again is power, power, power sun. Okay. It's flipping belting down there. There's not even a cloud in the sky. And I'm getting this and I've contoured. You see how I've used the light to contour and 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 use the, the shadows to create the, the contours in the in the body. Um, the hair over the face as well is also protecting the, the harshness of the light that the, that the girl is looking into. So understand what you're doing. Understand how to work with that light. You're going to get some really, really cool photos. Again, we've got the same uh, thing. We've got early, early morning. Um, and also early, early morning, it's quite harsh. I mean, look at the, look at the shadows on the, on the poles. 
uh, on the pillar that uh, she's she's leaning against on the photograph of the right. It's it's quite it's quite harsh. Um, she's got sunglasses on again because it's harsh light. But look how golden the light is. So it's early early morning. I think we're here at five thirty or something in the morning. Um, the light, the sun is just coming up over the horizon. The sun is beautiful. It's warm. It's a little bit soft, but you can get images like that. The one on the on the right again, it's banging sun. Eh? I mean, look at the logs um, shadow. That sun is high up in the sky because um, that log shadow is directly below the <laughs> below that that log that she's sitting on, and we're getting images like this. Okay. So again, guys, get out that comfort zone. So also, what I'm doing here is, um, you know, this is a. These are both the, the one on the right is a beach shoot. So sometimes we shoot fashion and stuff on the beach. So we're not scared to 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 do that. You can see it's again harsh light. And then the other one I've put on here is um, I've shot Molly um, at this pool. The water temperature was nine degrees, and I mean. There's one thing working with professional models. I mean, you know, they know what's expected. So, you know, when you look at her, that doesn't look like nine degrees of water, but <laughs> nine degrees temperature, but it was flipping cold. So do what you need to do. So guys, but, you know, I shoot natural light, but I do like my Godox light. So we're going to go through some images here where I'm shooting with my um, Godox lights. So... It's sort of the, 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 the image on the um, on the left. So the main light um, is my 8600 with a seven inch reflector um, with no diffusion on the edge of the of the reflector. And I'm shooting that image. You can see the light is a little bit off camera right. Um, it's a little bit high up and it's shooting down. So it's hard light. So you can see, guys, I'm, I'm a big fan of hard light. Even when I'm in the studio, um, a lot of my work in the studio is hard light. The same on the one on the um, on the right. I'm still also. It's the same um, setup. It's the 8600 with a seven inch reflector. The only difference with this image on the on the right is that I've used my 8200 and I've put it a little bit behind um, uh, the model so that I can um, just put some light on the hair. Um, Cool, I've got, let's have a look here. I've got a comment here. Candice, Seneca, love shooting in overcast conditions, great such movie shots. Absolutely agree, man. I mean, it's such awesome light to shoot. Got another comment here from Adet. Awesome, thank you. It's normally when I'm outdoors and the sky is so bright, I struggle with white. I expose for the face, the rest will be wet. Yeah, I know. It's, um, choose choose your wardrobe, uh, choose your wardrobe wisely. Um, you know, when my girls are packing their bags, there's there's lots of stuff in there that we can we can use. So yeah, you you can't go out in bright sunlight with a with a white shirt. You're gonna you're gonna struggle. Um, let's move along here. Um, we've got same here. Okay, so with the main light, um, for the one on the, the picture on the on the right. So again, it's my 600, 8600 with a seven inch reflector. There's no diffusion on that reflector. It's just set up and it's pointing downwards and I'm getting that image. Um, the, my V flat here is absorbing a lot of the light, getting that image. On the, on the one on the left, my main light is the 8600 again. And I've just got a, a, a massive P120 Octa that's, that's giving that light. So look at the shadows behind Donna. You can see mm, it's very, very soft. So the, the, the light is a little bit off to camera left. Um, it's very high up. And we're getting that nice soft light floating down onto, onto Donna. Um, this was shot with my 8300 Pro and the, um, the ADR12 reflector, which has become one of my favorite uh, uh, the reflectors in my studio. I, I really, really love it. Um, this image was uh, the the girl that was uh, doing ballet dancing um, at the at that warehouse. Um, we shot this in my studio, and yeah, we had some some really good fun. And just how powerful that! I just wanted to show you how powerful that eighty three hundred is. 
Um, again, for me, I love the shadows um, that it creates. Um, it just gives an awesome story. Um, and yeah, it's, it's again, one light creating this, this image. Um, here again, it's the same shoot. Both of these are from the same shoot, just doing different sets. So here we've got main light is the 8600 with a 7-inch reflector. That's the shot on the right. You can see how hard that light is. Look at the shadow that's formed on the wall. You can see how hard that shadow is. The one, the image on the left, we've got the main light, which is again the 8600. And then I've got the P120 Octa, which is a nice big ass uh, Octa. And we're getting nice soft light coming down from there. This one again, main light 8600 and my P120 from above. You'll see that in my little setups coming forward. And then what happened was I had this, this, this sunlight coming in from the back that was shining on my backdrop. And I decided instead of blocking it out um, and getting rid of it, I decided that I was going to use the sunlight in my photograph and I was going to light Savannah with, uh, with my overhead light. So this is also one light with the, with the 120 Octa. Um, okay. Photograph on the right, uh, the 600 again with a 7-inch reflector. So hard, hard light from above, just angled a little bit to, to create the sculpture in the body. And then the one on the, um, on the left, the main light, the 8600, again with the 120. And then if you can see on the background, on the back of the V-flat, you can see I've created a, a, a light, and that was just a full light shooting onto the back of the V-flat uh, was my 8200. Um, let's have a look here. We've got a question. Peter Bosman, stylist and photographer. I love how you choose the art for it just works. Thanks, bro. Yeah, you know what? Uh, it um, it does make a difference. Um, okay. So um, we've got here again diff two different shoots. So the one on the left, my main light was my 8300 Pro and my 80 R12 reflector, which is quite a big ass reflector um, that's shooting it. So I'm shooting high speed sync inside here because I'm exposing for the windows and then I'm throwing some light onto the model just to give the to give that feel of, 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 of what I'm wanting to achieve there. The, the one on the left, the main light is an 8600 with a, uh, the P120 Octa. And what I've done with that is I've removed all the baffles and all the diffusion panels out of that Octa on this particular photograph. So it's just a big silver Octa that's shooting light on there. And then I've used the light in the background. So there's light coming from the window that's falling on his shoulder that's giving his shoulder some light. So I'm using that light. And then I'm throwing light um, from the right hand side to, to illuminate him. And then I'm using the light from the window in the background to create a bit of separation. This one I put in, so this is the main light. It's the 8600 of the seven inch reflector. I'm also experimenting here with the very wide angle lens. Um, so, the sun is super bright, and I'm just flipping over, powering it with the with the 600. Okay, um, couldn't get the shot if you were you know without using light. Okay, both of these shots, uh, main light P600 with the, the 120 octa from above, um, and I'm getting these kind of soft soft images and moody images. Um, with this awesome light. You'll see the setup a little bit later. Um, yeah, and yeah, you see the eyes, we, we're, still, we're still connecting with the eyes. You know, for me, the eyes are very important. Um, by the way, these, these jeans are the most sought after jeans in my studio. So everybody that comes in there <laughs> makes, makes a beeline for the jeans. So um, yeah, they, they use quite, quite often. Um, this was a, the shoot again. So I showed you these two girls that we shot, um, in natural light. So one was by the door and one was outside. So these two images that you see here, main light 8,600 with a P120 Octa, and I'm getting this kind of vibe. So it's a completely different vibe again, um, and lit differently 
to get the kind of mood that I'm, I'm wanting to get from this, this image. Um, let's have a look here. Marius Barnos, thanks, mate, uh, for your comments. Thanks so much. Um, Carla Nimant, thank you, man. I really appreciate your support, and um, I'm, I'm so happy that you, that you dig what I do. Um, I've got, he has a comment. Let's have a look at this. Tyrone, I'm not a fan of shooting studio, but you make it look so easy and effortless. Yeah, <laughs> Yo, man, it's a lot of practice, man. You know, a lot of practice. A lot of a uh, lot of experimenting. Um, I have a lots of fun in my studio. Um, this was an awesome project to work on. Um, this was just a photograph that I pulled out. This was a dress designer and a flower, um, a florist all in one. So it has beautiful um, floral arrangements and beautiful dresses. So this is one lot. So this is an, my 8600 with a P120 Octa. It's just coming from the above, and I'm banging this out one lot. Um, yeah, so you'll notice most of these images, there's, it's, it's pretty much most of them are, 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 one, are one lot. Okay, so even these two. So these are, um, these were shot on the, on the, on the, mm, on the, same day yeah same day um different just different looks so we wanted you know the real the long hair with the nice waves and you know a, a different feel and vibe and then so we were using these for her um z card um and then we wanted the nice clean looking hair scrape back you know look for this so same light uh same day same shoot, um, same light setup for both of these images. You can see in the catch lights in the eyes that they're the same, uh, the same photo. Um, okay, so here we're going. Photograph on the left, main light is the 8600, the P120 Octa for a nice soft thing. I'm shooting HSS here, so high speed sync because I'm trying to expose as well for the outside, for the, for the light that's coming through the window because I don't want it to be blown out. So I'm exposing for that, and then I'm throwing light um, onto Molly with my 600 and the 120 Octa. The photograph on the right, um, it's the main light is the is the 300 Pro, 8300 Pro with the R12 reflector. I've put the reflector outside um, of my studio, and I'm shooting that that light through my door. So I've half closed the door, so I've made this little sliver of light that's coming through and created this image. Also. Look at the look at the um, the the shadow lines on her on her arm. You can see that it's that it's hard light, and uh, yeah, we're able to get that kind of a vibe. Um, okay, one on the left. This is one of the greatest shoots that I've done in a long time. You know, we shot with this dog, but it's also it's one light. Okay, um, uh, eighty six hundred with a P120 Octa. And it, the light you can see is just off to camera left. The one on the right, and the main light is the 8600 with the seven inch reflector. I just needed a, a pop of light. There was just not enough light for, for, for me to shoot Laura. So I just set up a light and I got this kind of photo. When I try to shoot this in uh, natural light, it just didn't work for me. Um, so I needed a little pop of light. So, you know, set up the, the 600 and the, and the seven inch reflector and, you, and you're getting a really cool image like that. These um, experimentation uh, photographs um, in my studio. So this is a, a, a projector, a slide projector that I'm throwing light um, and, and, and shooting that. Um, and then this was uh, the one, the main one, the color photo was a, um, it was a slide that, <laughs> that I put in there. Um, with a pattern on it, and I and I projected it onto the wall, and then Laura sat in front of it, and we kind of got that photo. So, um, yeah, there's there's lots of fun to to be had. Um, what have we got here? You know, Morris, one of that dog. <laughs> Listen, man, we're shooting that in the middle of the city. Okay, it was on a Sunday, so it's a it's a what do you call them? A pit bull. Um, <laughs> and it came off the leash, bro. Listen, 
there was pandemonium there um, to, 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 to contain that dog because it was, it was raring to go. So we had lots of fun, but uh, yeah, it was, a, it was a great shoot. Um, Tyron, uh, how hard, how far is your one to everyone? Okay, um, Brad, so it varies, mate. Um, very often my, um, most of the time, you'll see in my setups, most of the time my octaves are not pointing directly at the model. It's, it, it's, it's more often than not feathered away from it. It's hard for me to explain. But um, yeah, very seldom am I, am I shooting with the with the octa bang on um, on the model. Um, so yeah, uh, take that away. Let's see what this is, Peter. But um, do you prefer shooting with one light or would you choose multiple lights? This is my go-to is one light. If I can shoot it with one light, I'm shooting it with one light. There are, the, there are the occasions where I'm wanting to add a little bit of light because I want to accentuate something else or I'm wanting to something to, to, you know, to, to fill in or to shoot something on the background or to make a different pattern on the background. I'm doing that. But I'm always starting off with, uh, with one light and then adding the lights um, as I go along. So, um, so Andre Bardenost, which is an, a flippin' radical photographer in PE who understands light like, like a flippin' champion. I mean, to watch him work is fantastic. He's light, he lights from the back to the front. So he puts his lights on the back and he builds his light sets from the, from the back and moves forward. And I'm doing it the other way. I, I move, I set up my main light. And then I go backwards and I see what else do I want to, you know, what is that lighting? And then what, I, what else do I need to add to that to if something needs accentuating? So, again, um, you know, there's no right way. It's how you work. You know, it's, it's how Andre Bardenost works and he has phenomenal success. You know, I, I, I work the other way. I'm not, saying, I'm not trying to say that I'm as, as good as him with light, but I just work the other way. He lights from the back, I light from the front. Um, okay, we're getting through this. Uh, so this was a project I've just recently done for a, a grooming um, uh, a company in Germany. So these were really spectacular photos that we had to do. Um, and uh, yeah, very crisp lighting, you know, very on point. Um, at, a, at a at a stick to a brief quite uh, quite strictly. Um, yeah, Emmy one light king. Yeah, I'm not so sure about that, but but uh, yeah, <laughs> I love my one light. Martin, for the harsh light photography that you shoot, do you feel that black and white is more dramatic? Um, mate, that's just for me as a personal thing. Um, I love black and white. When I shot in film, I shot black and white. Um, I find that um, my black and whites, I think the images are a little bit more powerful for me, okay? I, I really love the way that it, it takes away all the clutter of color, um, and it just gives you the raw emotion that's left in the black and white. So um, even when I shoot on my camera, the screen on the back of my camera the photograph is, or the image on the back of the camera is black and white. Even though I'm shooting in RAW and I bring that image back into my into my workflow, it comes back in color. But I'm looking at that image on the back of my camera in black and white, and I and I know that if I if I kill it on the back of my camera in black and white, that the color version of that black and white is a killer. So I, that's just how I shoot. Um. Yeah, I think, you know, you're right, um, Marius. Everyone finds his own style. It's a creative that will define you. Absolutely right, mate. Absolutely right. So let's look on here. And so, okay, so let's go and look at, okay, we're really getting on here. So let's go and have a look at some of my favorite light setups. So, yeah, you can quickly see the shot. Um, Tyron, I know it's hard for you to see this, but this 120 octa with the 8600 is in front of the model. So the model is behind that light, okay? And then for this particular shot, 
um, you'll see from the photo that I that I that I'm going to post on you is that that 8200 just gave me a little bit of a kick light where I wanted it. So I shot this without the 8200, and then I went and fetched the 8200 and set it up, and I just got a pop of light. And then this is the photo that I chose out of that. Okay. So that 8200 just gave me a little bit of light where that above light was just creating a little bit of shadow. So I'm not averse to using other lights when I need to. Um, but if I can get away with one light, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so in this shot, I'll show you the image as well. There I'm shooting with my 8300 Pro. Um, this with, with, a, with a S85 Octa, so it's a, an 85 centimeter Octa. It is pointing a little bit towards the model. Normally, my uh, you'll see later, my um, octaves are pointing straight down. But in this shot, I'm pointing it towards uh, towards the model. And then you see I've got my poly board on the, on the bottom there, just that's going to fill in some shadow underneath her chin um, just to create a, a different shot. And then you can see the 8200 here is creating a light on the black V-flat. And then this was the photo at the end. So there you can see the background where the 8300 was shooting. And then you can see how soft the shadows are underneath her chin and et cetera, et cetera. So you, even though I set that shot up and I shot it in black and white, this was the color version of that black and white photo. Then we've got, um, this was one of the magic things in my bag. So the 8100 Pro, I must say when I, when I unpacked it, I, I didn't really know what I was going to do with it. Um, it was so tiny. I didn't really know like how it was going to work with me and if I was going to have a place in my, in my studio. Or was it just something that's going to was was going to be a hair light? Um, but I quickly put pay to that. So the photograph on the left is the eighty one hundred Pro. It's got nothing that's diffusing it. It's just straight out of the um, out of the light. I'm telling you now that I'm not even shooting that light at full power. Okay, so I think I'm on an eighth power there. If I'm if I if I remember correctly, I'm shooting an eighth power and I'm getting that photo. And then obviously the photo on the right is the actual photo of, of, of it. Light, strong, heavy light. Look at the shadows on the back. Um, we're creating that photo. This little light is flipping amazing. Man. It's, um, it's really, it's blew my mind for what it can do. So again, what I did was I don't have any um, diffusers that I can put on the front of this. Um, so I thought to myself, okay, so if I'm getting um, hard light, how do I get soft light? So what I've done here is I've shot that 8100 Pro into my V-flat, and I'm using the light of my V-flat to light Laura. And then I've got this photo. Okay, so that's the 8100 Pro shooting into a V-flat, to, how, I mean, how soft is that light? I mean, it's it's absolutely beautiful. So you can you can make and do with whatever you want as long as you open your open your mind to think and experiment. You can do whatever you need to do. But that's a beautiful soft photo that we're getting off that of that camera. Okay, so here we got another setup again with the eighty three hundred Pro S eighty five Octo. Um, and then at the back is the, the 8200 that is shooting on the, um, on the V-flat. There you can see my V-flat. It's on wheels. It's two, two interior doors that are joined together. Um, and I've got the poly board that's below um, Molly just to give that uh, uh, the light bounce um, underneath the chin. So that's the setup. Um, and then this is the photo. Okay. So two lights, one to light the back, one to light the, the, the model, and then the poly board that's, that's reflecting some light up. Um, this was also interesting. Um, I opened a box uh, one day from Godox. Um, Dean sent me a, bo a box of stuff one day. And I opened this, and I found this little light in it, this M1 LED light. And I thought, wow, they, I think they sent it to the wrong guy. 
because I unpacked it and I really didn't think, I didn't really know what to do with it. I mean, it, it looks quite small and, uh, you know, so I was a little bit skeptical about how I was going to make it work. Anyway, <laughs> um, how cool is this photo? And that's just from this little light, um, LED light that I'm shooting with. So, and I, while I had it, um, uh, because I had, to, <laughs> I had to send it back, but while I had it, I shot it a few times. You know, it was it was really, really cool. And it's, it's, it's the size of, it's, I think it's even smaller than a cell phone. But the light coming out of it and it's RGB, you can change the, 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 the color and you can, you know, you can make it um, cooler or, or warmer. It's, it's brilliant, man. It was, a, it was an amazing uh, thing. So, yeah, awesome. Um, I also had the opportunity, uh, we were shooting some video stuff um, and I got the, the UR 150 LED light. Um, it's a fan, so it's quite silent. But I took the opportunity to shoot with it as well. So here's just me shooting with the with the LED. So this is the pullback shot, and then this is the shot we got um, of that image. So yeah, you know, it's it's also a bright light. You can see the shadows on the walls, um, and it's really really nice. Um, the, the the interesting thing about LEDs light, which is nice to work with, is you know what you see is is pretty much what you get so it's not like using a strobe where you have to take a photograph and see where the light's falling this is pretty much quite easy to shoot okay here again um same same setup okay so it's a little bit different here um, and i'll explain what i did i just didn't have a proper pullback shot to show you so but the lights are exactly the same so what i was going to do is um i needed uh so now to stand up. So in the photograph, I've removed this, unfortunately. I didn't remove it in the pullback shot. So the polyboard has been taken away because I wanted to shoot some um, stand-up shots um, and longer length shots. So I had to also remove the, the 8200 that was, um, you can see it behind her legs um, in that little, that little light stand. But for me to... To do that, I had to take that light away, and then I made the the eighty six hundred at the back with a seven inch reflector. You can see that is flashing down onto the back of the board, and then I've got my eighty three hundred Pro and the eighty five Octa, and then I shot these two photos with that light setup. Okay. This one again, um, we're shooting the 8300 Pro. Uh, I've got the 8200 shooting back onto the, um, the, the V-flat um, with the S85 Octa. And I'm getting that photograph on the right. Nice and soft and quite moody. And yeah, I loved it. This one, okay, so here's, a, here's, here's a, a one I can answer you. So I started shooting this with two lights. So I wanted the light at the back, so the 8200 is creating that little halo at the back. And I've used now the 8300, and I'm using that small S65 octa. So it's only 65 centimeters, so it's quite small. It's above the model, it's shooting straight down onto the model, but it's in front of the model. So it's not shooting down on top of her head, it's in front of her. And I shot that image, and what happened was, because she's got quite dark hair, I wasn't getting enough light on, on her hair. And what did I do? I just went to go and pick another light, and I had a strip box there, and I aimed the strip box at the hair, and bang, I got the nice detail in the hair, and I was happy. So I'm, I'm trying, you know, if I'm, if I'm going to get away with one or two lights, but I'm not averse to adding lights when I think they are necessary because I'm not getting the photograph that I've got in my head. So I'm adapting my shoot and adding lights accordingly. There you can see the V-flat a little bit better. It's, a, it's an L-shaped um, uh, wooden, wooden doors. Uh, guys, we're getting near the end. Um, yeah, we're at the beach. Um, 8300 Pro, Pro with a 7-inch reflector. Um, I needed to, bound, to, to pump some light into this photo. The light, the sun is coming in from camera left. Um, and I needed to throw some light uh, because it, it just wasn't working for me. Um, it was too dark and I liked the pose and I liked the background. So it was easy for, 
it was much easier for me to just turn the light on and throw some light onto it. I mean, if you look at the photograph on the on the on the right, you can't really see that there's light um, that, that that light actually even fired, but it did. This was a very recent shoot. Um, we planned uh, the day. It was supposed to be a nice, beautiful, sunny day. But as uh, as it happens in PE, you can never predict the weather. So when we got there, we woke up. I mean, I fetched Lara at like quarter past five in the morning. Um, the weather wasn't great. I said, well, let's go down and, and see what we can get. Um, so this photo, I've got the 8300 Pro um, and, the, and the small S65 Octa. We took a chair. Um, we decided not to take any costumes with us, so we just took a slip dress. And that's the behind-the-scenes photo I took. And then this was the photo that I got from there. Obviously, this is post. I, you know, I brought the sky a little bit. But I was allowed to expose for the, the sky and then throw that light onto Laura to get that uh, image. What obviously makes this image as well is the angle of which this image has been taken you know so it's very low down on the on the ground and looking up and i thought it came out quite nice so it's also one light this is again so i took the eight the the s65 octa with me and um the this is the r12 reflector you can see it's it's a little bit bigger um so this is me shooting lara with the light hitting her um, if you shot this without the light, she was too gray in the photo and she kind of you know, sort of disappeared into the rocks a little bit. So I had to shoot some light onto her um, just so that I could get her to stand out and be a little bit more contrasty. And then that's the photo that I got um, using that uh, 8300. Guys, you also remember that I just want to let you know that I'm not shooting these um, – these strobes at full power, man. I mean, I think this is also at an eighth power. Okay, it's moving along. Okay, so what we also sometimes forget is, um, is I always try and tell a story in my photos. You know, there's always something that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell. I don't really understand, you know, I always, I always need to have a story in my head um, to, to go and shoot because it just makes it easier for me to to run through my creative uh, process if I if I've got some kind of story. So I'm going to show you a couple of shots. Um, this was a photo shoot that I did with Anna. Anna is a ballerina. Um, she was the girl that went to the warehouse um, for the photography group shoot, um, and then I approached her um, at that shoot and said, "Hey, do you want to come and uh, come to the studio and shoot?" And we did a couple of a couple of shots um but so this was me um telling a little bit of a story about who anna who anna is you know so an exceptional ballet dancer so while she was getting ready you know i was checking the light but i'm also taking photographs of stuff like this which tells for me is is a little bit of a story about who anna is you can see by the 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 you know the the um the use of her, her ballet shoes i mean they are you know what i mean they, you can see they're well used and the tape around there um this is her getting ready taping up her toes um, something that i you know as a as a as a non-ballet person you know you don't really realize what goes into um you know to to, to put these point shoes on so here she's sitting, um, tapping up her toes. I thought it was quite awesome. Um, you know, she doesn't get photos like this. You know, she doesn't see this. And I think they're quite, quite amazing to, to tell a story with the uh, thing. And then putting on her shoes and getting ready. And she gets, gets, gets into her own little zone. Um, you know, some nice tight cropped shots putting on her shoes. And then again... You know, the ballet shoes are just lying there, um, waiting to get put on. So, yeah, and then these are a couple of the photos that we got from the day. You know, they're very different, and it's not really a dancing, it wasn't really a dancing shoot, but we, we played around, and uh, you can see again, the, it doesn't matter who you are and, and what you do, when you see the jeans, they, 
<laughs> they 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 always uh, uh, they always come out so they always come out of play so even if you've got the the jeans and the ballet the ballet um outfits um and then these were some of the other images that we got um we just had a lot of a lot of fun shooting this um yeah and it was just like getting to know each other and just shooting and she was just planning things and doing whatever came into her mind and yeah we were shooting it and it's uh it's it's great uh, um, i love this it's totally out of my comfort zone i don't really shoot dancing um so i'm not really sure how it's supposed to look but obviously she's a professional and she knows exactly what it needs to do so she would do the do the jump or do the dance or do the move and then come and have a look um and see what was on the on the on the screen and then go and make a change and yeah it was a lot of fun um what else have we got here? okay so here are some of the other photos you know some of we got of the day which are quite cool so some natural light again um this is the light coming through the door on the right okay so this is some of the kits that i've got well this is the kit that i have in my studio so starting on the top on the left we've got the seven inch reflector which was my go-to reflector it doesn't have any diffuser on it um, i hardly ever put any diffuser on that i'll maybe put a color gel on it but i'll never diffuse it the next one the number two is my new one um is the the the, the r12 which is a much bigger um a reflector which i really love um, it doesn't. It doesn't have a Bowens mount, so it fits onto the three hundred and the um, yeah, the eighty three hundred. It fits onto there, which is great for me. And then I've got the the small Octa, the X six S sixty five, which is an amazing little thing. It's so easy to carry around. I've also got the S eighty five, which is a slightly bigger, also very easy to carry on. The QRP seventy, which is obviously great um, because it's a quick uh, quick release and quick open. So it's very, very cool. So it's easy to carry along. So I do that. I take that on locations. The next two are the P90 and the P120. So these pretty much are constantly up in my studio. So I don't break them down. So um, yeah, also brilliant. They're brilliant for directional light. You can see these ones don't have the diffuser panels in them, just so that you can see. But those are the those are the, the the diffusers that I use in my studio, and all the shoots that all the shots that you've seen today, it's have one of these um, diffusers on there. The lights that I have, um, so on the top left, I've got the AD100 Pro, which is a is a is a new um, recruit in my studio, and has has really. Um, you know, made a name for itself. I'm I'm very impressed with the with this light. I must say, um, as I said in the beginning, I thought mm, maybe not. You know, I'm not quite sure where I'm going to use it. Let me tell you, it's it works in my in my studio. Um, below that, I've got the 8200. I've had that for a very very long time. Um, I normally shoot that with, without the Fresnel head on. So you normally shoot it with the um, with the bare bulb. Also a brilliant light, very portable. Packs in your bag easily. On the top uh, right, I've got the 8300 Pro, which is phenomenal. Um, it's only a 300 watt light, but I think it shoots far beyond its power range. Um, so it's really great. And the one that's been in my um, my studio for the longest is uh, the old uh, 600 BM. I mean, it's a non-TTL, which is like, I mean, if I can say to you, this must be like, six years old i think i might be mistaken and it's power man it just, i've done nothing to it i haven't even replaced the bulb i haven't even replaced the battery it just it just works man and and it, it's it's enough power for me um to blow away any of the sun that i that i need to do here and then what's on my camera is the expo trigger which then controls all of these lights um on their different channels and i can sit with my camera and uh, do whatever i need to do Guys, so that's it, man. I know it's, I think it's taken long, longer than I thought. I hope I haven't lost a whole lot of you along the way or you've fallen asleep. I want to say thank you so much for listening to me. Um, and I hope I've inspired you a little bit to, to get out of your comfort zone and start experimenting with uh, both natural light and, um, and, and, and starting to use your light. 
Um, I want to say thanks again to Godox. Um, they've been absolutely amazing with me. It's been a real privilege to be part of their team. Um, the service that I've gotten from them is just it, it's just awesome. You know, the whole team there is is behind me, and uh, you know they treat me very very well. So that's great. And then um, recently I've been become a member of Breed, which is a international um, an academy that's based in the US. Um, so yeah, that's been, that's been an awesome thing for me to join um, with Melissa Rodwell. Um, go and check out her site. Um, we're going to be doing a chat. Um, I think it's on the 31st of um, January. I think it's the 31st of January. Um, so Melissa and I are going to have a, a Zoom chat. It's free for everybody to join in. It's going to be uh, through their platform, but I'm going to share it. Hopefully I'm going to share it onto my platforms, onto Create Studio. Um, and there we're going to be talking with two models, one US model and one South African model. And we're going to be focusing a little bit about on the industry from the model's point of view. So I think there's going to be a lot of insights that photographers can uh, can learn about it. And then also for models who are wanting to, to see what it's actually like and what happens out there in the real world. Um, it's going to be invaluable. So I look forward to you joining us then there's also questions and answers uh, that you can put through which we'll do so look forward to hopefully all of you will join me then uh, it's going to be very exciting again guys thank you so much for for listening and spending your time um you know i hope i've inspired you go to my website go and check out some of my work and uh, wherever you are i hope uh, i get to meet you um, and chat to you and um, some of the some of the guys on this on the on this this evening I I don't know and I've never met so if you if I'm in your in your sights please come up and tap me on the shoulder and come and say hi um, I'm always keen to meet you um, and we can chat about stuff um, yeah and look forward to seeing you guys when I'm up in Joburg the next time and yeah maybe we can do a workshop or two so guys thanks again. Um, Really appreciate uh, um, your your time. Let me just uh, show you that I'm still here. Okay, a little bit blurry. Okay, so so thanks, guys. Um, again, um, inspiration time. See you soon. See you on the thirty first. Cheers, guys.